You won't believe what's coming to Diffusion B. If you ever got frustrated because you wanted results that look similar to something like this, or this, or this, or this, but your results only look something like this, well, exciting news, Diffusion B is about to release some brand new features. Currently in beta, Diffusion B is about to have a huge update using ControlNet. If you're not familiar with what ControlNet is, it allows you a lot more precision with your overall creations. So, so far, because this is still in beta, there's only a few options here. I've toyed around with a few of these. You have Body Pose, Depth Map, Depth? I can never pronounce that. Depth Map and Scribble. But with Depth Map, I've had more uh, consistent results. So I'll show you the difference. I'm gonna be using two images, same image, it's just a bottle of glue. And I'm gonna tell it to try to create a spaceship first using the image to image. So let's just generate like two of these images. I'm gonna leave the default settings pretty much as is. I'm gonna use my own custom model and then we'll go from there. Okay, so it's done generating this. Now, as you see, the image isn't the worst. It's not the best either. I told it to create a spaceship. Again, your prompting is gonna be key to the overall result, uh, but it did analyze the image. It kind of gathered, you know, this is the uh, glue bottle itself is in the uh, foreground and the backgrounds like the little shade and it made that a little lighter as it did in the generated image. So let's hop on over to control net. Again, this is still in beta, so the look and everything else might change. Now, similar to the image to image uh, window here, control net looks very similar. The difference is now you have an option that says control net at the top and you can choose the model. Currently, there's only three available, uh, but again, this might change as time goes on. And yeah, I'm excited. So we're gonna make two images just like we did before. ControlNet allows you to analyze an image for specific details. So they have, for this, uh, in Diffusion B, you have body pose, which is great if you're trying to make like figures or people. Now I've tried using ControlNet myself. I've used the body pose feature and just did like weird random poses and made like Gundam robots and uh, all kinds of weird like sci-fi creatures and stuff. There's different ones out there now and hopefully as time goes on, they implement those into Diffusion B as well. You have ones that are specific for like studying the image and looking for straight lines. You have ones that are focused on hands. It's getting really crazy. So there we go. As you can see, it looked at the image and the lighter parts, like the, you see the, the vast contrast, right? Of the, the light to shadow. So the light to shadow. So it looked at that and it saw and it was able to distinguish, okay, this shape here. So it made a much more accurate image uh looking and analyzing at it and being able to like really focus on that area because it actually saw the table as well as a part of this whole image um so you'll you're actually getting the rounded part of that table which is kind of interesting and as time goes on i'm sure you'll be able to like paint away stuff and like use masks to kind of get more accurate selections but that's just crazy to me so let me find another image and i'll show you what the body pose will do so I just grabbed an image when I uh, took a trip to Canada and it's just me with the arms extended there and I'm gonna see what this can actually do. I wanted to pick a challenging one. So there's statues in the background. I'm not sure how well it's gonna interpret, you know, me versus these statues, but I, this is like a standard T pose. If you ever did like animation or uh, bottling, it's kind of the starting position you have your character in, um, but we'll see how this goes. <laughs> And then I'm going to switch this over to the uh, depth map. I can never pronounce that word. I can, I'm not even going to try. I'm going to, I'm going to switch it over to the other model and uh, see what, how well that uh, finds me and how accurate it is. So I chose the prompt, a futuristic, cybernetically enhanced warrior. Ah, so as you can see, it saw the, uh, well, me. <laughs> so it did get uh, three different models, three different people, which is cool. So this weird looking architecture here, this weird structure they have with these little dots and lines, that's how this mo particular uh, control net model sees the uh, image there, it reads a person. So it read these other figures as actual people. So it got their general pose there. And see, I just picked one. I should have said multiple people, but that's fine. I'm gonna let this generate one more image and then we'll see how well that gets it. And I'll pick one more image uh, where it's just me. 
so it doesn't get too confused here but that's kind of cool that it did see that there's three different figures in this so all right so it got the t pose but i want to see what the depth map version will do and then i'll pick one more image but you can see how accurate this thing is if i swap this over to like the image to image it's not gonna really be able to distinguish that there's three different people i'm air quoting as though you can see that it's not going to see that there's three different figures in this image as clearly as a control net model, which is the exciting part about this because just the accuracy you can get with this, the level of detail is like, it's mind boggling. So this is the depth map version of it. And you can see, uh, being that I'm in the foreground and I do have a lot more contrasting like highlights and shadows than the background, it did pick that up. So it, the brightest part of it here, the most like contrasting area here, the lightest part, it did pick that up and it got the T pose and everything accurate, the foot positioning and everything accurately. Uh, and even got some of the positioning of the background characters, little feet, which is cool. Uh, yeah, but I'm gonna let this last one generate and then we'll swap a different image. And just to show you that this is really, really accurate, I'll run the same thing with the uh, image to image. So yeah, this is the second one that it generated. So we'll hop on over to image to image and see what that does. Okay, so in image to image, I tried to utilize the same image and you can see here that it's not quite picking up the three characters like the control net did. Um, I will adjust the sliders uh, for the input strength of the image and see if that, if, you know, will We'll, I'll crank it up a bit, but we'll see if this actually picks up the three, you know, people in the image here. So see, I cranked it up a little too high. So now it's just making like terrible versions of the image. <laughs> so let me dial that back some. This is still in beta, but the newer version, hopefully you'll be able to see what actual numbers you're putting in here. And the guidance scale, I'll leave that where it's at. So hopefully I found a good balance here. But yeah, just right out the box, the image to image isn't quite getting the accuracy as I'd like it to. Um, so this is the right kind of T pose, but it's backwards. <laughs> um, for whatever reason, I'm facing away from the camera. It did give me like a, you know, uh, cybernetically enhanced warrior kind of people in the background. Uh, the second version of this, at least it got me facing the right way, but not got rid of the people. So that's interesting. And then the, it got the left leg pose pretty correctly, but not the right. Uh, so it's close, but you can see this is a lot more, takes a little bit more fiddling to kind of get it a little closer versus like right out the box with control net was just like spot on with the pose. Turning up the guidance scale, again, it, for whatever reason, it's making uh, me, me turn backwards. So, I got the colors accurate. Uh, and again, it made like the, the little robot people in the background, that's cool. Gave me a little dog too, it's fun. But yeah, not quite as accurate. The overall, like, you know, the framing's correct. The positioning of the people in the background's pretty, it, it's close. And it understands, okay, there's like something there and it gave that little bag, but the body pose isn't quite accurate as far as like facing the camera and facing away from the camera. Um, I'm looking at other things too, like perspective lines. So we have that line there, got that. The background, um, this perspective line's kind of like at an angle and this one's not, it's kind of more straight on. So we did kind of lose the horizon line versus the original, uh, versus the one that's generated here. Uh, the first image actually is a little bit more close to that horizon line, but yeah, you can just see like, it, it makes really cool images. It's just not as accurate as it can be. I'm at a museum and again, it's just an interesting pose I thought. Uh, but there's only one figure here unless it picks up the painting. So we'll see what this does. Uh, but I'm going to have this as the depth map still, and then I'll swap it over to the uh, body pose. 
Okay, you can see that the first image is generated here. It got the body pose. Again, this is just using the uh, depth map. So it read the lightest parts and the darkest parts. And it got that overall really, really accurately. And your prompting does affect the overall image too. And as shown before, it was able to kind of capture the overall look line that we see here. It's actually being included in the image. <laughs> and that's from this leg here, which is kind of cool. Anyway, so let's swap this over to the body pose. You might be thinking, well, that's cool. You can, you know, get more accurate images, but like, what else can you do? So stuff like this. So I have an old illustration I did, and then, you know, regular pen and paper and some markers, and I made it into a digital rendering. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. You can do that in Procreate and stuff, but like, how can you utilize Diffusion B with it? Well, you can do fun stuff like this. Using Control Net, I'm able to remaster essentially old illustrations and turn them into stuff like this, or this, or this, or this. And that seems amazing to me, especially for an illustrator, designer, and you just want some new ideas, fresh ideas. Maybe you have an old, you know, illustration or an old design you want to revamp and just kind of go through different styles and looks. You can do amazing stuff like this. So you can go again from an illustration like this to something like this, just using control net. That is mind boggling. And you can take it one step further. You can turn those illustrations into animations like this. And I'll break that down in the next video. So like always, be sure to like, subscribe, and I'll talk to y'all soon.